Okay, we're moving on to question eight. Okay, so it says, after flying a short distance, an insect came to rest on a wall. Thereafter, the insect started crawling on the wall. The path that the insect crawled can be described by this function, okay? You should recognize this function as a cubic function. I'll show you why it's a cubic function, but you must start to be able to recognize these things, okay? <laughs> Where h, so basically the dependent variable, is the height above the floor and t is the time, right? So time is your independent variable, right? And then it says since the insect started crawling, okay? So then it says at what height above the floor did the insect start to crawl, right? Another way of saying that is what is the y-intercept, right? Because they're basically saying where did it hit, where did it start on that wall, right? Before it started crawling, where did it land on that wall? And then it started crawling. Where was that? That's what they want to know. So let's give them what they want. Okay. Question eight. Okay. So 8.1. Let's write out this cubic graph, right? So we have h of t equals t minus 6, oh goodness, I'm just like leaving things out here, minus 2t squared plus 3t. You might want to put your, give your t's like a little tail or something so you can differentiate them from the pluses because you don't want to mix those up, minus 6, okay. So before we even get to the question, I just want to show you why it's a cubic graph. We must, as I said, start to be familiar with these things, okay? So let's just quickly, I think it's called foil, is it foil? Yeah, so let's just quickly multiply it out. So that's negative 2t cubed, negative 3t squared. So I'm just putting the, those in there. Okay, then we have negative 6t. Then we have positive 12t squared, negative 18t, and then positive 36. Okay, if I've done something wrong, you can let me know, but I think that is correct because I did, yeah. Okay, so let's just quickly simplify it so that we know what's going on. Remember, we always look for like terms. So here it would be plus 9t squared, right? Um, then we have negative 24t, and then we have plus 36. Okay, so the reason it's cubic is because the highest degree is 3. And remember, cubic graphs look like this, right? That's a positive one, or they can look like that. Okay, that's a negative one. So this one is going to look like this, okay? And a positive one would look like that. So that's just to give you an indication of what we're working with. But for 8.1, basically what you're saying is we want the y-intercept, okay? When we want the y-intercept, what do we do? We set x equal to 0. In this case, it's t equal to 0, and y is actually h, okay? So if we set t equal to 0, h of 0 equals, um, I'm just going to go back into our original, right? I'm going to look at this over here. Let me just check. You can see what I'm doing. Perfect. And then I'm going to be 0, 2, sorry, squared plus 3, 0 minus 6. Okie dokes, you can see that. So then it's going to be negative 6 multiplied by negative 6, which equals 36. Okay, but 36 what, guys? They've given us here the height in centimeters. It's important to put that in. Okay, we put that in because it indicates that we actually understand the details of the question. We're not just doing math randomly. Okay, we're actually applying what we are seeing in the scenario. So that's 36 centimeters. That's that answer. Let's go on to 8.2. Okay, so it says, how many times did the insect reach the floor? Okay, how many times did the insect reach the floor? So what it wants to know is it wants to know where the height equals zero, right? So basically what it's saying here is it's saying, what's the x-intercept, right? So they're just literally asking us things we know right? But they're asking us in, in this weird scenario with this weird little bug, but it's things we know, okay? And it's important to recognize these things, okay? I'm saying x, x and y here. It's actually h and t, so don't confuse that. Um, so x in this case is t, because that's our independent, and y in this case is h, okay? So let's just go and put that in. So again, I'm using h of t, right? t minus 6, negative 2t squared 
plus 3t minus 6. Okay, and what they're asking for is the other intercept. So we make this equal to 0 this time. t minus 6, negative 2t squared, plus 3t minus 6. Okay, so we know that obviously one of the intercepts is going to equal 6, right? Because we have this here, right? So th this either has to equal 0 or this has to equal 0. Okay, this equals 0 when t equals 6. This one is a tricky one, right? Because it actually, let's use maybe the quadratic formula or something like that because this is not an easy one to factorize. So let me just quickly get my calculator so that I can do that. Okay, remember that we get given our quadratic formula. Don't have to learn it, don't panic, over here, okay? So let's just <clears throat> quickly identify what B Oh, well, A, B, and C, I've wrote those in some weird order there. Okay, so A in this case is going to be negative 2, B is going to be positive 3, and C is going to be negative 6. So let me just show you what I am plugging it into. I'm plugging it into this little formula. Okay, remember, the quadratic formula helps us find roots of a quadratic um, equation, right? A quadratic expression helps us, okay? Let's put this all in. So we have three. Well, let's put, make sure we do this so it's actually negative three. Sorry, it always helps when you actually type in the formula that you want and not the things that you think you should do. So then it would be three squared minus four times negative two times negative six. Okay, I think we might have a bit of a problem here because you can see that this thing that's going to be minus or subtracted from the 3 squared is going to give us a negative square root. So we're starting to get an inkling here, right, that we are going to have a little bit of a problem. Ah, there we go, you see? And the reason that there's a math error, right, let me just show you, is when we say, let me show you, when we say, um, I'm just going to be looking at the square root, of the quadratic formula, right? I'm just going to be looking at this there, the b squared minus 4ac. So let me just show you what I'm b squared minus 4ac, okay? In this case, it is 3 squared minus 4, negative 2, negative 6, which gives us a square root of 9, right? Minus, what is all of that multiplied together? I think it is 48, but let's just quickly type it in. Let's not just trust our senses always. Oh, it also helps if you put in the right sign marks. You put it in wrong again. Okay. It's 48, right? So we know that this equals the square root of 37. Now, we know that the square root of um, 37, of negative 37, is not a real root. Okay. So here, there are no real roots, right? So there's only one root, okay? It's only one root where the height equals zero. So this bug that we are very interested in only reaches the bottom, a height of zero, once, right? Height of zero once, okay? Because there's no real root for this bracket, okay? Very important that you understand the rationale there because some sometimes you know we look at the memo and we're like good grief what are you saying so it's very important to understand what this is saying okay and this is the whole reason right it's important to always look at our quadratic formula okay and again that's given to you on your oh sorry I think you weren't I don't know if you were able to see that the quadratic formula very important it's given to you don't learn it off by heart don't stress Okay, so now we've done 8.1 and 8.2. Let's now go to the last question of 8, which is 8.3. Okay, 8.3. Okay. Okay. So it says, determine the maximum height, right? So now we, we looked at the two intercepts, right? And now it's saying, determine the maximum height that the insect reached above the floor. Now, when you see things like maximum, you should be thinking derivative okay and you could be saying why must i think derivative margie you're just being silly now no when i say derivative right remember the derivative helps us find the turning points right well it helps us find the gradients at any point right but it also helps us find those turning points where that maximum and that minimum are okay so let's figure this out okay so let's write this again 
we're gonna have h of t okay now i think it's handy here for us to write out the full expression of h of t which we have over here uh, where is it over here right where we have negative t cubed plus 9 t squared minus 24 plus 36. Let me just double check that I did that right. So I'm just gonna quickly do it again because sometimes you, we lose a couple of things when we um, multiply through or when we're copying things down. So let's just practice that again. I'm just gonna do it quickly because you've seen me do this already. Okay, then we have, uh, sorry, then we have plus three t squared minus 6t plus 12t squared minus 18t plus 36. You see, I can really see I've actually made a mistake. You look here. Look, it's very important. You see, Margs, you're making mistakes all the time. You see, look. It's actually, look, right? It's negative 24. And I said over here, oh, a negative 24 is fine, but it was a 15, right? It's actually plus 3 plus 12. So let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, you see, I just changed signs, so this is actually 15. Okay, the answer doesn't change here because we were looking at the intercept. Okay, but important here is just to remember, always make sure that you do things like this um, correctly because it's easy to get things wrong. You can see I messed it up. Okay, so we have that. So now that we have that written out, it's easy to get the derivative, right? So h dashed of t, remember notation is important here. You can't just say h, h t because it's not the same, right? The derivative is not the same as the equation. We're getting the gradient of the equation, not just the equation, okay? So remember, when we get the derivative, right, we always take the exponent, we bring it down, we multiply, right, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent power, okay? So that is what we get, okay? But now, when we want to get a maximum, we make this equal to zero, okay? A maximum or a minimum. Remember that whether it's a maximum or a minimum depends on what type of graph it is, right? Because this is a negative graph, right? Remember I said it comes down and up like that, right? Because it's a negative graph, we know that we're gonna be looking for a maximum, okay? If it was a positive graph, then you would be looking for a minimum, okay? So let's just look at how this works, okay? So negative t squared plus 30t minus 24, okay? So what we're gonna do, um, so just to go back to this point here, you might be like, okay, what is this whole negative positive thing? The best thing to do is actually just set it equal to zero. Don't worry about whether it's positive or negative graph. That could be a, a confusing thing because sometimes there are exceptions to the, to the sort of explanation that I gave you previously. It's better just set it to zero, see what you get, and then try there afterwards to see what's a maximum and a minimum. And a minimum. Because here, yeah, because it's a quadratic, we're likely to get two roots, right? We're expecting two roots. And then what we'll say is out of those two roots, which one is the higher? And that'll be the maximum. Okay, it's an easy way of doing it. I don't want to confuse you. Let's rather do it that way. Okay, so here, let's just divide through by six because negative six and 30 and negative 24, they all sort of are multiples of six. So let's divide through by six and we get, or negative, negative six. We get t squared, negative five t, plus four, okay? So that's that. Let's just do a little bit of factorization, right? Um, this one's not too bad. Let's maybe use four and one. So I'm gonna say negative four, t negative one. You might be saying, Margs, I can't do factorization like that. Use the quadratic formula, guys. That's what it's for. It just takes a little bit longer. I did this in my head, but you can do it with a quadratic formula to check, okay? So t can equal four or t can equal one. Okay, but what did it ask us, guys? It asked for the maximum value, okay? So the maximum value is going to be t equals 4, okay? So let's now put that back into our equation up over here. Let me make sure that you can see what I'm saying. Cool. We put it back into the equation, into that, and actually figure out what the height is, right? Because it didn't just ask us for the time that was the maximum. It said... Determine the maximum height that the insect reached above the floor. So we know that it was at time 4, 
right, in minutes, but we want to know the height. So you have to sub it back in. So we can just sub it back into that first line. We can say four minus six, negative two, four squared plus three minus six. Okay, so that's negative two. You can put this into your calculator if you want to. I don't really mind. Oh, and now I'm saying I don't mind and now my brain is like spazzing out. Okay, 32. Sure, my brain doesn't have big match temperament today. Okay, so that's 20. I think that is, Mods, what is that, my love? Let's see. <laughs> that's 20 minus, so okay, it's going to be minus 26. Okay, cool. So that equals 52, 52 what, guys? 52 centimeters, right? They told us that height was calculated in centimeters, and therefore that's our answer. Okay, so what they asked you is they said the maximum height. If you were like, okay, but what if I put in one and it like gives me a larger height? You can always test that for both of them, okay? I used four because I knew that when I put it into this, right, it was going to give me a larger height. But you can test one as well if you want and see what the height is. I mean, we can, I'll quickly do that now just to show you, okay? And then you'll see that it's not as, as high and therefore, that's why we used the other one. But you don't have to take my word for it. That's not how maths works. That's the nice thing about maths is you don't have to take anyone's word for it. Okay, so that's negative five. This is gonna be negative five. I hope that's correct. No, yes, that is correct. So this is only 25 centimeters, right? So that's definitely not our maximum, right? 52 is our maximum. So we're gonna say that is our max. Okay, and therefore we have answered our question. Importantly here, just work through this slowly, make sure you understand what's going on, but also recognize that this is not this major complex question, okay? It's just putting what we know, right, from functions, from cubic graphs, into a sort of practical, I don't know how practical insects are, but into a different sort of scenario. Okay, so that's that question done. Let's now move on to question nine.